Everybody thinks dentists are super rich, but as a general dentist myself, I can tell you very confidently that is not true. And here's why. It is possible to make a lot of money, but at the end of the day, you actually have no money. The difference between making a lot of money and having a net worth are two completely different things. It's taken me a long time as a dentist to realize that you can make a lot of money, but a lot of money is going out the back door and you're actually not increasing your net worth at all. It is actually zero, or sometimes it's actually going more negative than you actually think. Now the average dentist salary in the United States is $208,000. It's an insane insane amount of money. It's actually so much money that it is hard to believe that in five years, you're not gonna be bringing home a million dollars because $208,000 times five is over a million, right? But in today's video, I'm gonna show you how quickly that $208,000 can turn into, well, nothing. And here's what I mean. In the average in the United States, the average dentist salary was $208,000. I don't know what it is today. This is a couple years ago. This statistic just came out, but that is a shocking large amount of money. Now, the problem with averages is that some people just crush it and they make way, way, way more money, but most people actually make that much or below. One of the biggest factors as a dentist that you have to face is student loan rates. I'm sorry to say this, but dentists are now up against a Goliath of student loan payments. It is no longer $40,000 to go to dental school like your grandpa's grandpa way back in the day. It is now almost half a million dollars on average to go to dental school at 7% interest. I'll do the math here in a sec. It's insane how much dentists have to pay. So even though yes, on paper, they look like they're making a lot of money, really those student loan payments bring that down much, much, much lower. Now you have two choices on the student loans. You can either just pay them off, let's say on a 20 year note, or you can actually just pay the minimum payments and just wish and pray somebody's gonna either hopefully forgive them in the future, which hasn't happened for anybody, which happens to very, very few people. And for some people, I think it's actually never gonna happen. But if you pay the minimum amount of your loans, you're actually not making the principal balance go down at all. So you're always gonna have a net worth that is half a million dollars less than whatever your assets are. So stick with me here in a sec. Basically, your student loans are half a million dollars. You're paying $1,500 a month. At year zero, you're half a million dollars in debt. Your net worth is negative $500,000. At the end of 20 20 years or even 30 years at paying the minimum amount, your student loan debt is still half a million dollars. Maybe even more if you deferred it. Why you would go on deferment, I don't know. People just do that because they don't want to pay the money, but then your balance actually goes up. So don't do that. But let's say you do want to pay your student loans off. You want to be just financially very responsible and you want to pay them off. Let's go into this little calculator and find out how much you're going to actually have to pay, which is actually going to bring the average dentist salary way down very quickly. So if you want to pay those down, you're going to be paying $3,300 a month plus to get those. And if you pay down on the principal at the end of the loan, you're actually going to be paying taxes on top of that amount. So it is going to be very difficult for you to make that payment. But let's say in the first 10 years, you're paying $3,300 on your student loan payments and you're having to pay that over the next 20 years. The amount of interest that you're going to have to pay on that is almost a million dollars. But let me double check that real quick because that almost sounds absurd. Yep, it's $930,000, pretty close to a million. You're paying almost a million dollars on top of your half a million dollar loan, but that's how things work. And people don't understand this. When we're in dental school, they don't teach you this information. How much student loan you're gonna have when you graduate, how much it's gonna cost you, what the interest rates are, how to pay back your loan, and nobody teaches this financial aspect. So we get out and we're in an arena where we don't really understand what it's like to be a business owner and actually have to service this debt. You know how to become a basic dentist. Basic dentist meaning you're just doing safe dentistry, but you're just really, really slow and unconfident when you get out. For the first five years of dentist, you have no idea this is even a thing until sometimes 10, 20 years later, you look at your loan balance, you're like, it's still half a million dollars yes, because you're making the minimum payment. By the way, if you want somebody to come to talk to your dental students about this so that they can learn it from somebody who actually understands it really well, I would love to do that someday. See what you've done. You've already riled me up about the student loans and the interest rate and the cost of tuition that is just going up and up and up. Look, student tuition loan has doubled every 10 years. Based on my calculations, I graduated 12 years ago. I had $250,000 in student loan debt. Now, in-state tuition, I'm not even talking out of state, which is probably $100,000, $200,000 more. In-state tuition is half a million dollars to go to the school that I went to. Half a million dollars. It's doubled in 10 years. Every 10 years, it's doubling. If you are following me here with the math, that's an exponential rate of growth. So it is not only doubling, but it's doubling based on that other amount. So let's say it's $100,000 in 10 years, it's $200,000 and then $400,000. You're not going on a linear curve where every year you're actually increasing the amount of money. It's on an exponential curve. So where's the next bubble gonna crash? Everybody's thinking real estate. I'm gonna say student loans. Okay, sorry, you can tell I get really passionate about those student loans and the rising costs and all that kind of stuff. I can't do anything about that, but what you can do is actually subscribe to my channel. It's really easy, just press this little button here. Now, I do have to tell you one thing that actually drives me crazy, and if you wanna drive your own dentist crazy, just try this. Tell your dentist that you think that they're rich or infer that they are rich. Like, I get patients all the time that are like, well, I'm not a rich dentist like you, and I just go off the wall. That I'm not a rich dentist. And I tell the patients, hey, stand up, and you can see the back parking lot from the operatories they're sitting in, and I'm like, I'll give you two guesses on which vehicle is mine. 
There's seven vehicles in the back, sometimes eight. Guess which is the doctor vehicle? They can never guess because it is the second crummiest one in the parking lot. So they would never guess it. Yes, I am not driving the brand new Kia. I am not driving the brand new Tacoma with so many four wheel options. My vehicle is the used 2018 Tacoma which is a great vehicle. I love it. I paid cash for it. I literally paid all my money to buy that car, but the windshield wipers, they suck. They don't even go more than two modes. You have a very slow mode and a very fast mode. And where I live, it rains all the time at a medium rate. So I actually am always under or over the wipers. Anyways, it's not a very good situation. Just because I'm a dentist doesn't mean that I'm rich, which leads me to another point. A lot of doctors typically do have the nicest car in the parking lot. Some of these vehicles are so expensive that I don't even know how they're paying for them. And let me paint you a picture of something called the doctor life. Lifestyle. Now the doctor lifestyle is probably one of the reasons why it is so difficult to actually keep any of that money that you're getting. Let's say $208,000 is the amount of money that you're getting every year as a dentist. If you have a high car payment and you have high student loans, all this kind of stuff, it becomes very, very crippling. You become kind of almost trapped in your mid career. What I mean by that is that dentists are more interested in actually showing that they're wealthy or that they're rich, but they're not actually doing other things to become rich. Here's what I mean. They're showing on social media, all these places that they're going and they're spending money on all these cars and all these vacations. They're eating out every night instead of cooking or going to Costco or ordering food in. They're doing all the things to look rich, but in reality, they are not and they never will be rich. You from the outside think they have so much money, they actually don't really have much money. And that's the difference between cash flow or actually having some money or cash in the bank or in your bank account versus actually having a net worth. Now, net worth is a totally different topic, but basically your assets minus your liabilities. Most people don't have any assets. They just have these liabilities, like the student loan payment that I told you about that's half a million dollars that you're gonna carry around the rest of your life like a baggage that you don't wanna carry. My point is that dentists and other doctors, chiropractors do this too, where they're caught up in this doctor lifestyle, where they are trying to look rich and trying to have this lifestyle and actually justify all the hard work that they've not only done, but all the hard work that they are currently doing. Dentistry is a tough profession, so you need to have a car or a vehicle or a nice house or a pool at your house to justify all the hard work that you've done as a dentist. Problem with this is it makes it very, very difficult to actually make money as a dentist. And in the end, you actually have a net worth that's actually not that much higher than when you graduated dental school. Now let's look at houses. This is part of keeping up with the Joneses. If you're trying to keep up with all your other friends and you have the small house and they have the big house, you just don't feel very good about yourself. It takes a lot of discipline for you to do the right thing, pay down your loans, not buy that big house until you can afford it comfortably. And yes, there are the exceptions of doctors who are making millions and millions of dollars. Sometimes those are doctors that came from dentist families where their mom and dads were dentists. They not only paid for their schooling so they had no debt, but they actually paid for them to get into school. Shh, I said that, yes, modern day that still happens where people's moms and dads pay for them to get into medical school, school or dental school. No judgment there, it just didn't happen to me. I had to get straight A's and my mom and dad had no influence in me getting through dental school or paying for dental school. Paid that off almost all on my own. So to conclude this video, if you wanna become a rich dentist, there are probably better ways to become rich. Being a rich dentist is an anomaly. Most of us are actually just struggling month by month to make payments. That's why you're seeing dentists push treatment that's not needed. That's why you're seeing dentists buy all the fancy stuff for their office that nobody really cares about, like $80,000 chairs. Yes, I said every operatory has an $80,000 chair every few years. Don't really understand that myself, but you're seeing people build these just elaborate offices and the fancy fish tanks that they have. And you're having sales ladies inside of your offices, pushing treatment, getting patients to do these like payment plans, these credit card financing things. You're getting people pushing dentistry on patients when they don't actually need that treatment. And you're seeing this more and more and more because it's just becoming a tighter squeeze for dentists to make money. Not necessarily their fault, but how you choose to treat your patients is absolutely your responsibility. I kind of chose a hard way paying off my debt, not having those really nice and fancy things until I was a little bit older, but that's not what everybody does. Most people actually right out of school or even dental school, they're buying houses, fancy vacations, all this kind of stuff. And then you're middle aged and you're stuck with all these loans and all this debt being $208,000 as the average salary. That's not enough money to go around to support that lifestyle. And then you just end up working five days a week, six days a week. Some of these guys are working six days a week. I can only stand two days a week and work in my own office. So I can't even fathom at 40 years old, 50 years old, probably in their sixties are gonna be working that much in their offices. But that gets besides the point. If you wanna become a rich dentist, maybe just think about becoming a dentist and becoming rich in real estate. Start learning about real estate and investing, maybe stocks, maybe different types of financing. I, I won't even get into the e-commerce, the drop shipping, the Bitcoining, but learn some other skill other than becoming rich as a dentist. Because most people naively, and myself included, are naive in thinking that I'll have a million dollars in five years because the average in a salary of $208,000 times five is a million dollars. I'll be rich every five years and have a million dollars. It is shocking that how that million dollars every five years actually shrinks down to zero for most people. So I hope you learned a lot from this video. And now when you're at your dentist and you're complaining about how expensive 
expensive that filling of that crown is, it's still gonna be as expensive, but now you're not gonna think, okay, this is going to a rich person because now I know my dentist is probably not rich, but is actually making a good amount of money, but in the end is actually maybe even struggling to make their payments. Super shocking, I know, but that's the reality of being a doctor nowadays. So if you're a young student and you're watching this, you probably learned a lot from this. Maybe your expectations are now going from a very high level now to a more realistic level. So I hope you learned a lot from this video. Thanks again for watching. Comment down below. If this is you, you became a dentist and you're struggling, you're probably not gonna wanna comment and admit that. But if you know a dentist that's struggling because of this, go ahead and write a comment below. And as always, hit this button to subscribe so you can watch more videos like this. And I can help more people learn about financial responsibility as a dentist. Obviously, I'm very passionate about this. And as always, thank you for watching.